Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Russell. Um, usually I have a parent meeting for all of my parents for the freshman and sophomore students, but this year I started doing the kind of webinars, I like to call it, because I know parents are so busy and it's hard for you to get to the school and I really wanna make sure that you get all of this information so that everyone is adequately prepared um, throughout our entire years of high school. I will be giving the same information to your students in their advisory um, classes in the upcoming weeks, but I wanted to make sure that I got out to you something that you can keep and reference throughout the years um, and also begin to start working with your students as they pick their courses for the next couple of years to make sure that everyone's on the right track. Just a little bit about me for some parents, especially the freshman parents that I have not met. I am from Flint, Michigan. I actually still live in Flint, Michigan um, currently, so I commute to work about an hour. It doesn't take me that long, except for on the snowy days. Um, I'm a graduate of the University of Michigan Flint. I received my bachelor's and my master's from U of M Flint, and I'm currently enrolled in courses at Spring Arbor University for a second master's. Um, I've worked in college access and counseling for the past eight years. I worked at a college for about four years, and then I have been with PrepNet um, four years, four uh, school years, and love it. And But I've been in education for the past 13 years, working with special needs students before I transferred into working into the college atmosphere. I'm a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, and I currently have my husband and my daughter, Demi Rose. Um, as you see her in the picture, I mention her a lot. I talk to students about her a lot. So if your student comes home and says, Mrs. Russell made me look at pictures of Demi Rose, they'll tell the truth because I talk about her all day long. So just a little information about the senior class from last year. I have a lot of parents that are always interested to know where the majority of our students go, where are they get admitted to, and how are they doing. Um, so for the senior class of 2018 for Arbor, the top universities um, that students chose to attend would be University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, Eastern Michigan University, Washtenaw, Wayne State and Michigan State and Canton. Um, the only additions will be University of Michigan, Dearborn, and Madonna. I see University of Michigan, Dearborn for Canton a lot because a lot of our students choose to go there because of the scholarships they offer and you still receiving their University of Michigan degree. And then for Arbor, Washtenaw Community College offers five full rides. That's your books, that's your fees and your tuition for two years. So a lot of our top students will take advantage of that um, if their financial aid award letters and packages aren't looking too promising. I think it's important for students to remember uh, their graduation requirements and always keep that in the back of their mind when they're thinking about graduating in those four years and staying on top of everything and making sure that they're prepared um, and ready to exit our schools. So students need 22 credits total, four credits of math. That means that's four years of math. They need a math class every single year that they are a student um, in our schools. And that is a requirement from the Michigan Department of Education that we must follow. Four credits of English for social studies. They need world history, government, and U.S. history. For science, they need biology, chemistry, and a third year. The third year is their choice. AP Environmental is a big one. AP Chem, AP Bio, pretty much whatever they choose, but that third year is up to them. Art, they need two credits, so that'll be two years. World Language, they need two years of the same language. So if a student chooses to take Spanish, or if they take French, or if they are at Arbor and decide to take Mandarin, um, they need two years of that same language. PE, health, and then three other electives. Electives can cover a multitude of things. It could be an extra art class over the requirements. It could be AP psychology. Um, it could be they're doing a enrollment course. Uh, it could be another science class past their three that are required, um, but three more electives. They require 60 service hours or 15 community service hours for every year that they attend um, their school. If they receive 120, then they get special cores at graduation and um, 
are honored at graduation for being one of our honor scholars uh, for service. They have to complete their senior project. They have to be accepted into a four-year university of college, and they have to successfully complete two AP courses, and that will be passing those with a C or better. As we talk about AP courses, these are advanced placement or college level courses. The course is created and scored by college board and college professors, uh, which gives it that advanced placement um, title. AP exams are scored from a one to a five. So if a student receives a one on their AP exam, then that means they are not recommended to receive college credit. If they receive a five, then um, that's awesome. <laughs> that's the highest score they can receive. Most colleges uh, will offer credit usually at the four and the five. You'll see some that will offer credit if a student receives a three on the exam, but usually at the four or the five, you're pretty much guaranteed to receive college credit uh, at the school that you attend. So when I say college credit, it does not always mean that a student will receive uh, the exact equivalent of a course. It could be um, if we use, if a student wants to go to Harvard or Princeton, so one course will not be taken care of. So the school will say, okay, you passed AP psychology with a four on the exam. So you no longer have to take psych 100 when you come to our school. The school will say, okay, you passed AP psychology with a four on the exam. So we're gonna start you at psych 150. So you don't have to take psych 100, but you still need the same amount of credits that you would if you took psych 100, but you just start at our upper level course. But for schools that do offer advanced placement credit, um, the benefits are just endless. So if we look at this example I have here for the University of Michigan Dearborn, this is their actual chart for advanced placement credit. If a student takes calculus AB and receives a four on the exam, they receive math 115 credit, which is the calculus course at University of Michigan Dearborn. If they take Calculus BC and receive a four on the exam, they receive Math 115 and Math 116 credit, which is eight credits. University of Michigan Dearborn per credit is about $700. So they will say that they received eight credits, about $5,600. That's awesome. Even if they received a three on the exam, they're still going to get some type of credit at University of Michigan Dearborn. And this is just in the calc um, subject. But if you look at art history, uh, 2D, 3D design art, biology, chemistry, computer science, all these hold um, a lot of chances for students to receive uh, additional monies and advanced placement credit. For Eastern Michigan, for Calculus AB, if they receive a three on the exam, they get Math 120 credit. Biology, if they receive a three or four, they receive credit. Chemistry, if they receive a three, four, or five, they get additional credits as they keep going. So Taking an AP class um, is very beneficial to not only the student, but to the parents too, so that you can also you know, save money when paying for your, your child's tuition. If you're interested in how a school awards advanced placement credit, all you simply have to do is search the school and add advanced placement credit onto your um, Google search. So let's say that you wanted to find out how Western Michigan um, awards credit. You can search Western Michigan Advanced Placement Credit and a, a table or a chart uh, should pop up where you can and easily see how those credits will be awarded to your student. But if you have any difficulty, you can always contact me. Another option for students is to participate in dual enrollment. Um, students can take AP classes and have dual enrollment classes as early as their uh, junior year. Students will need to have a 3.0 GPA with us 
They can take up to six dual enrollment courses in the junior and senior year. That will be three per semester. Usually we stop students after two because that's where we see the most success. Um, students do have to have a way to the campus to where they're doing dual enrollment. Um, based off the allotment that we receive from the Michigan Department of Education, I encourage students to do it at a community college level because it usually covers the cost of the course. If they decide to do it at a university level, they may have to come out of pocket um, for some of the course and definitely for their books. Each dual enrollment course counts um, about three to four credits, depending on what kind of course they take. So we have a lot of students that will take uh, like a psychology or sociology course. Those are usually three. Um, credits, a music appreciation course, we sometimes have students take, um, a literature course. When you get into like the science and the math courses and the English courses, it sometimes becomes hard because you have to take the placement exams um, unless you have an SAT score that qualifies you to not take the placement exams. You'll have to take it at the school. Um, and if you don't pass, they're going to put you in the course that they feel uh, will adequately be best for the student um, and if that is not a college level course or if that equals our course at the school we will not pay for it so not being a college level course will be anything that's not labeled 100 or more so if they get placed into english 080 or english 050 then we do not pay for that being equivalent to a course that we have at our school would be if a student was to take the math placement course and got placed into uh, Calc 1 at the school, that would be equivalent to our AP Calc. So then we would not pay for that course because they would just take our AP Calc at our school. So that's why those courses get a little difficult um, for students. It's important to remember that dual enrollment courses are not always transferable, especially for our students who are really looking at trying to go to some out of state schools. Um, sometimes those courses just do not transfer, but I do work with every student to see um, what courses we can get the best bang for our buck for. Packets are always available with myself or you can find them online. It is a parent and student responsibility to initiate um, registering for dual enrollment, going and taking all of your paperwork, meeting with the advisor on the college campus and picking the course. I can help as much as possible, but a lot of work has to be done by the parents um, and by the student. We pay the allotment that we're given every year for dual enrollment. And if there's anything left, we will reimburse you for your books, but we do not pay a front for your books. You have to pay for them first. If there's anything left, then we will reimburse you. And courses must be academic. Um, they cannot be hobby or activity courses. So if a student says, I want to be a nursing assistant, we won't pay for nursing assistant courses. If a student says, uh, I want to learn to play the piano, we won't play, pay for the piano courses. Uh, the guidelines are available for all parents and students to see um, on the Michigan Department of Education dual enrollment um, frequently asked questions. Uh, they detail exactly what kind of course that we can pay for and what kind of course we cannot. So applying to schools. Students can start applying to colleges at the end of their junior year. In order to apply to a school, you need three complete years of academic history. And you also need SAT or ACT scores. So before then, you cannot apply to college. Students cannot start now. Um, I'm not even sure what the college will do with their application right now. So you have to wait until the end of your junior year. But it is important to start thinking about college now. Do you want to go to a big school? Do you want to go to a small school? Parents, this is so important to have that conversation with your students. I tell students all the time, when they get to senior year and I'm working with them on applying to college and they tell me they want to apply to UCLA, but I've already had conversation with their parents and their parents are saying, no, they, I don't want them to go that far away, but the parent and the student have not communicated their wants to each other. And in order for me to really help your student with getting into the best school and finding the best resources, um, it's important for us not to spend the entire year with them applying to schools that you know um, you really wouldn't like for them to go to. It's impossible to afford for them to go to. 
Um, so just having those conversations really uh, will benefit them when it comes time to apply to school. Grades and SAT or ACT scores are the biggest factors when applying to college. So students will say, well, I'm involved in all these things, and that's great, and you should be, because that does add to your application. But if you don't have the grades in the SAT or ACT score to get in the door, then those, everything that you're involved in, you know, is just there. So it's very important for students to stay on top of their grades and on top of those SAT and ACT scores. It's very important for them to retake it um, if they receive a low, score is very important for them to use Khan Academy to try to better their score um, for the next time they take it. All of those things are very important. Grade trends are also extremely important. So we have some students that start freshman year, they don't do too good, but they continue to climb up and schools do look at that. But they also look at freshman year if you start off bad. I mean, I'm sorry, if you start off good and then fall off. So that's important for students. They look at grade trends, whether they're positive or negative. I always tell them, schools see everything. They see your transcript from freshman year um, until whenever you apply. So if you apply at the end of junior year, or if you wait to the middle of senior year, they see those grades. They see if you take recapture academy. They see if you take summer academy. They see if you don't pass a course. These are very important things. Um, for students to keep in mind uh, throughout their time in high school. Picking the correct course pathway is just as important. I'm going to uh, talk more about that when I get over to the examples from U of M, Michigan State, and out-of-state schools. And then students need to take advantage of AP courses. So we do have the requirement of two AP courses. But when students apply, schools will ask me did they take full advantage um, of all of our AP options and if they took only the two classes and I have to mark no because they didn't um, but if they take more than two if they take four or five then that is taking full advantage of everything that is available to them and then that looks really good when applying to schools so I use these three examples because these are what I come um, in contact with most around this time most students are thinking about the University of Michigan Michigan State and out-of-state schools so for the University of Michigan, most students who are admitted to the school are around a 3.8, 3.9 GPA and above a 1400 on the SAT. The highest SAT score that a student can receive is a 1600. So these are you know, the students that are, are doing very well and excelling at their school. The one thing University of Michigan Ann Arbor does is they compare the students to the students who have graduated and are currently at that school. So students from Kent Prep won't be compared to students at Canton High School. Students from Arbor Prep won't be compared to students at Kent Prep. They're going to look at who Kent Prep, who Arbor Prep has, what are those students averaging on the SAT, what are their GPAs averaging, how many AP courses are, are they averaging to take, and that is how they're going to decide who receives admission and who does not. Now, that can be a good thing or a bad thing. I look at it as a bad thing because our students are high achieving students. Our students uh, that apply to these schools are students that have above 4.0 GPAs a lot of times, are students that um, have a lot of extracurricular activities, who are leaders in those extracurricular activities, who take their time doing their essays. So if you're going to apply to University of Michigan Ann Arbor, you have to be serious. And you have to start being serious your freshman year. Waiting until your sophomore year, waiting until your junior year is too late. Um, you have to stay on track uh, and keep in mind that this is a school you want to attend. If you want to go and be an engineer at the University of Michigan Ann Arbor, you must take the AP Physics. You must take uh, the AP Calc. Um, if you want to go and, and go into their music and, and dance school, then you must showcase that you have demonstrated interest in that. If you want to go into nursing, you must show demonstrated interest, which means you must have job shadowed a nurse or wrote a paper about a nurse, did a presentation about a nurse or, and um, becoming a dancer and becoming a singer. All of these are important. 
from Michigan State University. Um, oh, it's it's around the everything that I pretty much mentioned for the University of Michigan Ann Arbor. So from Michigan State University, you'll want to apply early. So the University of Michigan Ann Arbor, they participate in the common application and their deadline is November 1st um, for early action. For Michigan State, they participate in the common application also, but they don't have a deadline for early action. They don't really participate in early action. They have rolling admission, which means you can apply to them anytime. But the advice they give most students is you want to get that application in when our application opens up. So the application usually opens up August 1st of the summer before student senior year. So you'll want to uh, get that application in so that you can have the best chance to compete for to be invited for scholarships. And so you can have the best chance for admission. And then for out-of-state schools, the, it's, it's really all over the place. And that's why I wanted to put these here. There's no definite rule for out-of-state schools. So students will want to be intentional of meeting with me and us looking at exactly what that school requires. If a student is looking at a historically black college university, if they're looking at an Ivy League school, if they're looking at a Big Ten school, um, we have to look at those in the context of the school. So each one could be completely different of what they require, when the requirements are, if they need to take a subject test, if they do not need to send in their SAT scores, maybe they just need to complete an essay um, and the school is score optional. There's so many different things that schools require. So that's why it's so important for students to meet with me um, early on so that we can get them on the right track. When talking about paying for school, um, going to school, parents are always asking, how can I get the most money? The number one thing that's important for parents and students to do is to complete the FAFSA. So the FAFSA stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. That opens every October of the senior year of the student and is due by March of their senior year. But I like for students to get it done early because if they qualify for federal money, that money could be gone by March. That money could be gone by December, by January. So if they get it done early, then we can have the best chance for money and the best chance of them receiving assistance to pay for school. When you complete the FAFSA, it qualifies you for grants, which we know you do not have to pay back, loans, which you do have to pay back, and work study. Work study will be students receiving a job on campus, receiving a check um, every two weeks or monthly, and that money um, is to assist them with any expenses that they have while at school. This application is completed online at fafsa.gov. It looks at the parent's income, your assets, taxes you pay, the oldest parent age, the size of your family, the number of siblings in college or at home if the student has an income, if the student has assets, if you have a business or maybe you have a farm and the value. And students always need to remember what sticker price versus actual price. So I have seen where a school can cost $50,000 before any financial aid and then the student also applies to school that costs 26,000. And after we have applied all of their financial aid, all of their scholarships, the school that is 50,000 actually ends up um, more affordable than the school that was a 26,000. So it's very important um, to just hold off on making decisions until we receive those award letters um, come from completing the FAFSA, which usually comes around January or February of the student's senior year. Um, and we can really sit down and, and look at uh, the cost and what's going to be most beneficial for the student. I know paying for school is always on parents' minds. So this website, the fafsaforecaster.ed.gov, is a wonderful website um, to look and receive an estimate um, of your eligibility for federal student aid. It provides estimate amounts um, and savings that can go to college, and then it gives you great uh, experience with completing the FAFSA so you can get a chance to look at it and see what will be required um, when you complete the FAFSA during your student's senior year. So I would encourage all parents to 
go on this website and just kind of look around and see what's there to, to assist you. There's also a website that's called Raise Me. Um, on Raise Me, these are micro scholarships. So Madonna and Wayne State are two big schools. I know that participate in these. So let's say a student goes to visit Wayne State. They receive $1,000. Let's say a student um, gets all A's a year. They may receive $500. And it adds up to a certain amount. And then that money can be used if they decide to go to the school. It's pretty cool. Uh, I tell students to sign up for it, uh, even if their school, the school they're thinking about going to is not on there, we still have two, three, another year for some students before we even have a strong idea of where they're going. So just go ahead and use it. So for college and career planning for admissions, colleges are looking at the following. Again, that GPA and SAT score or ACT score, the rigor of your schedule. So when students apply to schools, I do have to send in a copy of their senior schedule, even though they may be applying before um, any senior year grades are calculated or added to their transcript. I still must send in their schedule and I have to let many schools know if the schedule changes. Any extracurricular jobs, volunteering, helping at home, so some students say, I can't be an extracurricular. I can't have a job. I can't volunteer. I have to go home and watch my sister um, or my brother or my grandmother until my parents come home. That is something that we want to put on your college application and in those essays. Speaking of essays, some schools require them, not all schools. So if you're looking at Michigan, University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, um, Michigan State, uh, would be two schools that require an essay, but if you're applying to Ferris State University, Michigan Tech, uh, Wayne State, those schools don't require an essay. Not all schools require a letter of recommendation. Mostly it's for scholarships. Um, but that's something for students to keep in mind that you don't want to burn a bridge. I always tell them you want to maintain a good relationship with your teacher because some scholarships and some schools say, I want a letter of recommendation from your math teacher. And you want to be able to go back to your math teacher and then provide you a positive letter of recommendation. Interviews usually are for scholarships or, or honors programs. Um, usually for a mission, uh, you really don't have to do interviews anymore. Leadership roles are very important. So if you are involved in key club, if you are involved in student council, are you president? If you're on the basketball team, are you the captain? What kind of leadership have you shown? That's very important. Any challenges a student has overcome? And that's not always life or death. That's not always being poor or being homeless. Challenges could be, uh, I transferred from another school. Challenges could be uh, at home. You know, I've been dealing with anxiety. A challenge could be, I wasn't expecting to take AP Biology, uh, but I was placed in that course, and this is how I had to, uh, and this is how I had to perform in order to do well in the course. So we have to think broad about challenges that students have overcome versus just always going to the same, same old ones that um, most students write down. And then interest in school. So just really quick, SAT versus ACT. In Michigan, we offer the SAT now um, that is mandatory in the schools. But the ACT is also a test that most students could take. The biggest difference would be that ACT uh, has a science portion. That is the biggest difference. And the scale is a 1 through a 36. Schools will take both. Um, if a student receives free or reduced lunch, I can assist them with paying for the SAT or ACT. They just have to come and see me. So these are goals that students should be working on. Visiting a college campus is very important. I try to tell students to visit any college they're thinking about applying to just to make sure they fit into the culture of the school. They like the surroundings. They can see themselves there for not only the next four years, but even maybe years after that, um, if they decide to get a master's or to work around that area. Really look into college cost. Right now, students say, I am going to school in Florida. That's great, 
but most of the schools in Florida are going to run you about forty-five to fifty thousand dollars. So making sure that you're aware of that and how you're going to pay for school is very important. Making a plan to regularly check in on schoolwork and homework. I always visit classes and tell them around this time is where you get a little lackadaisical. You're not doing your online coursework. You're not showing up for advisory. So just staying on your students um, about their work, about turning in homework, checking in on Infinite Campus. Being involved, get involved, get involved, get involved. That's very important. Some of our top students would get more scholarships um, if they had more extracurricular activities and more volunteering and more leadership experience to write on their college application. Review your PSAT scores. Logging into Khan Academy and utilizing that. Talking with your family and your student about paying for college, again, is so important. And then during the summer, what a wonderful time to do some job shadowing, um, to look at some of the colleges and see some of the summer programs that they're offering, to maybe do some work or some volunteering, um, just to beef up that uh, college application. This is my contact information. So I'm between the schools uh, throughout the week. Emailing me or texting me is always going to be best. If you want to come in and meet, um, if you have some questions, uh, if you have some ideas and wanted to run them by me, if there's a student you say, I really would like for you to pull them. I don't think they're going to feel comfortable coming in and just dropping in your room. Um, I do do around this time, I start doing uh, numerous drop ins and advisories for freshmen and sophomore students because I've now gotten my seniors to complete those college applications. So I have a little bit more time. So this is when I really start dropping in uh, on those. Um, freshmen and sophomores, but if there's something say, I really would like for you to pull this student and have a conversation with them, then I have no problem doing that at all. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I hope all this information um, was definitely something that you could find yourself using. And thank you for listening.